Jamie Torres. I'm the city council person for Council District 3, West Denver. District 3, West Side is my birthplace and uh, it's raised me. So uh, 30, 32 years, 33 years. We moved away when I was in high school. Um, we were homeless for a period of time and then got public housing in Littleton. Uh, so I finished out my high school years there. After college, I moved back. Uh, I actually moved right back to the house that I grew up in, right next door to my grandma. And what I recognize that inspires me about her is, I think there's this overarching sense of vulnerability about her. Um, and I think a lot of people talk about the accident that she was in and the braces that she had to wear and painting from her bed. Um, I tend to focus a lot more on her resiliency and and that I think is what inspires me most about her um, and just sheer talent. Um, there's, there's so much to admire there and um, it wasn't um, it, it wasn't always uh, shouting at you it was uh, her just kind of following um, the stream of consciousness that that she owned and that she could do um, with or without a lot of attention and um, and that I, I, I feel like I, 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 I relate to in a lot of ways um, but I I love this kind of piece of um, strength and resilience that um, she exemplifies over and over again and, um, and she always reminds me a lot of kind of this this true voice and um, following that in whatever you do, whether it's um, the clothing that she wears, it's very romanticized right now. It's who she was and who she connected to. Um, and following that true path becomes one of the most admirable things that you can do. Most, I think it's important to recognize really strong women um, and their legacy in our communities. Frida absolutely is that in both an artistic and a political sense. Um, but as a, as a human, um, she's, she kind of walked a path that um, is, is so admirable in really trying to grasp freedom in, in all of its ways, whether it was um, with uh, her romantic life, with her creative life, um, with her political and social life. Um, that, I think, becomes um, the, the celebration point for a lot of uh, folks who look at Frida. Um, and, and, and there are so many different ways to connect with uh, who she was and what she painted. Um, I think we, uh, as at a personal level, you see a lot of the pain that you might experience yourself reflected in her, her, her images, that they're um, so focused on self-portraits, I think is one of the things that um, we have to ask of ourselves to look at who we are and, um, and, and kind of what monopolizes our, uh, our psychology as, as, as women, as Latinas, um, as Mexicanas, and, and really celebrate and kind of go with that rather than try to hide it or um, try to be something for someone else. District 3 is, is the heart of where this kind of celebration should be. Um, this isn't um, trendy uh, or overly romantic when, when we talk about Frida. Um, and you know we've, we've seen her image over commercialized in ways that um, she would probably hate. Um, she was absolutely against um, uh, capitalism and um, the commercialization of image um, and she really wanted I think a voice for uh, people for community and uh, and and that can get lost in um, really transactional celebrations of her or her life or her her, her paintings um, but I think we can connect with the most in West Denver is that uh, one, we're um, a multi-ethnic uh, district and community. Uh, Denver's West Side is made up of immigrants and refugees, Chicanos, white folks, uh, you name it, Vietnamese community. Um, this is who we are, and I hope that um, folks can find something that they connect with when it comes to 
um, Frida's real words and art and legacy um, and, uh, and, and really kind of celebrate with us. Um, for me, it always comes back to this strength and resiliency. Um, what we're seeing come to the surface right now has, has really always been there. We've had our Indigenous communities, our Black communities, our Latino communities um, shouting this as well for the last three generations um, that I can go back to in my own family. Um, and police brutality and um, disparate treatment um, between uh, one community and, a, and another community. We were redlined out of economic opportunity right here in Westwood and in my own neighborhood in Villa Park. So um, there were things that she fought for in terms of um, uh, social equality and advancement of community um, that I think we have been fighting for for a long time. Um, and particularly in, in, in Mexico where I, I think people poorly understand um, the uh, the history there, the political history there, um, the oppression there of indigenous communities, of voice, um, and and really trying to latch onto something that pushes back against that. And she did that her whole life. So, um, so I look at a lot of our indigenous communities right now who have been doing that their whole life, and who stood with them at that time and who didn't, um, and 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 that piece is what comes really. Um, kind of to the forefront for me right now. Um, America created this presidency. Well, we can't deny that at all. And um, and yet, we've also uh, been able to, I think, find real successes in times of crisis. Um, and and we don't stop. Like, if anything, the fact that we've got we've got seven Latinas on city council right now. Um, uh, I'm sorry, five, seven women, um, and and we're talking about things in ways nobody did before, um, or one or two tried to before and they were overpowered. So it really is about flipping that power table and demanding to be listened to and recognized. And who are we doing that on behalf of? When I when I work, it's often not uh, with me on the bullhorn. Um, it's often behind the people whose lives are most affected and who have an individual story to tell. Um, uh, I just provide the access in opening the door. And I think that is um, what West Denver's been yearning for, um, is just to be heard and, uh, and recognized. And so um, there's, I think, that, that battle um, and, and trying to do it in a way that's um, communally representative. So um, th those are the things I think that speak to me in, in times like this. Um, and activism is necessary. It's going to move the needle. Um, but we've also got to vote. And that's been one of the most painful uh, things to see when, uh, when we really look at our voter turnout, um, and in this district in particular. Only 39% voted last year in the municipal election. Um, so just over one in three voters voted. And we make it as easy as we possibly can in Denver. You don't even have to leave your house. And, um, and, and that's the piece where uh, if we want to make sure that our, our, our voices are represented, um, uh, we've all got to participate in that piece um, and, uh, and make sure that we're holding people accountable. And that's our neighbors too not just our public officials. I think people see me in um, the seat that I'm in in city council um, and haven't bothered to look at my immigrant and refugee record in this city uh, and, and what came before this particular elected seat. Um, I didn't want it if I didn't have that, um, that narrative and that opportunity to work on those issues. So um, that, that I think becomes a real political learning lesson for us. Um, and one, you know, she and I may have disagreed on any number of things, but she would have wanted my participation. I would have wanted hers. And, uh, and that, I think, is um, the bigger lesson that we don't make time for right now. Let me just thank you for continuing to do this um, and really reinforcing that 
This isn't some uh, superficial celebration of a very recognizable kind of celebrity image. Um, I think there's um, such incredible meaning in her in her work that folks should take some time to understand a little bit more. Um, one of the projects that I spent the most time on and learning about her was um, her painting called The Broken Column. And it's uh, kind of a, a Romanesque column that signifies her spinal cord and um, just how broken she was. And, and you look at it and it looks so painful, but she is sitting there looking at you in your eye and she's not dead and she's not dying. Um, and I think it, it, it kind of surges this recognition of how powerful women are um, and uh, how much respect they should demand.